As we continue working with exponents, this next section covers logarithms and their relationship to exponents. Let's take a look at what these logarithms really are. If I've got an expression like some base b to some exponent x equals some a answer, we can actually rewrite this using what is called a logarithm. So this is going to be exactly the same expression, so in the exact same relationship, but we're going to use the word log to represent this different layout. And then the base of b is going to be the base of the log written as a subscript, and the answer a goes inside the log, and that's going to equal the exponent. The log is always equal to the exponent. Really, the log solves for the exponent. And so we can actually rewrite any exponent as a logarithm and any logarithm as an exponent. For example, if I wanted to convert these exponents to a log problem, I might look at 3 to the fifth, which is equal to 243, and I can rewrite that as a logarithm. The base of the log is the base of the exponent problem, 3. The answer goes inside, and the log is always equal to the exponent, the exponent being 5. So log base 3 of 243 equals 5. And we can do it with expressions, too. If I had 7 to the 3x minus 1 equals 4, I could rewrite that as a logarithm where the log has a base of 7 matching the base of the exponent problem. The answer goes inside, and it's always equal to the exponent, 3x minus 1. So log base 7 of 4 equals 3x minus 1 is the same thing as 7 to the 3x minus 1 equals 4. We can also convert the other way. We can convert a logarithm to an exponent. So for example, if I had log base 8 of 64 equals 2, I could convert that to an exponent problem knowing that the base is 8. What the log equals is the exponent of 2, and the answer is what's inside the logarithm. 8 squared equals 64. But again, we can do it with variables as well. Let's say we've got log base 3 of 4x plus 1 equals 5. We can convert this to an exponent problem, noting that the base of the log is 3. What the log equals is the exponent of 5, and the 4x plus 1 is on the inside. And these are both the exact same expression. Although when we're working with logs, there are two key bases that you need to be aware of. So we've seen in the previous problems bases of 8 and 3, bases of 7 and 3, but there's two key bases that are really important and they are used a lot. And so we do something special for them. The first is what we call base E. Now E is a number that's approximately equal to 2.718 and it goes on and on forever, kind of like pi. This comes up in nature naturally quite a bit, describing things like population growth, and, uh, bacteria growth, things like that. And so because it's natural, we're going to call this the natural base. And so we're going to use the natural log base E, which is written as ln. When we see ln, that's going to assume the natural log is base e. So for example, if I've got e to the fifth power equals 148.41, if I were to rewrite that as a logarithm, instead of saying log base e, we'll just say natural log of 148.41 is equal to the exponent of 5. Because I've written ln, natural log, the assumption, the implication is that's already a base e. The second common base that we use is base 10, often because of scientific notation written in base 10. And we just use log log with no base written. If there's no base written, we will all just assume that means base 10. So for example, if I've got 10 to the negative 3 equals 1 over 1,000. If I want to write that with a logarithm, we'll say that the log of the answer, 1 over 1,000, 
equals the exponent of negative 3. Now, because I did not write a base here, we all will assume no base written means it's base 10, the common log. That's what logarithms are, a way to rewrite an exponent. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can evaluate and solve equations that use logs.